Afternoon, we've had a, a lazy old morning. Uh, I think we're just all trying to recover a bit from uh, all the different trips we've had and bits and pieces we've done over the school holidays. But everyone's feeling a bit down, so we thought what we're gonna do to wake ourselves up is get the kayak out again, get it in the car, get to the beach, and um, hopefully a bit of sea air will wake us all up today. And I also thought it would give me a good opportunity to do like a, a mini review of it. And also, um, my thoughts on Hyundai and uh, I think, bear with me on this, they could be the key to unlocking uh, the whole kind of EV conundrum. Here we are then, we've arrived. Um, here we are at Muddyfoot again and uh, as promised I'm going to take you through this uh, kayak. So hopefully you can see it all right. This is, uh, I think it's pronounced Itiwit. So uh, I think uh, the best thing I can do is Wherever. to open it up uh, put this on a time lapse and then you can just see how easy it is to set up uh, right out the bag. So there you go, that has taken us, what, just under 15 minutes with a coffee and uh, Annabelle helping. So we've got it all set up. Basically, it, um, hopefully you can see it. There are three valves, which block the three main parts of the kayak. So the, the first one you do is the floor to make that nice and rigid. And then you do the two side ones and that is pretty firm to the touch. Hopefully you can see along the bottom here, there's a Velcro uh, strip, there's Velcro on the bottom of the seats. And then the uh, back support is, uh, goes through this kind of um, buckle with this uh, new, what is it, nylon type strap. That's it pretty much set up. The only thing left to do is we need to put these on. Now, they're called all sorts of different things. I actually don't know what the real name for them is, so I'm gonna call them fins. <laughs> and effectively there's three fins. They all go on the bottom, they lock in place. And um, having used a much cheaper kayak in the past, I have to say these make all the difference. So it's definitely worth the investment. What are you eating, Thomas? Prawn cocktail. Prawn cocktail, no, prawns and? Crabs. Not no. crabs, what's in there? Bananas. What's it? Ah. Cockles. Huh? They nice? Delicious. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, well, it was my intention to come out here, let the kids have a paddle round, and I could talk to you about our Hyundai and what I'm thinking about. But unfortunately the wind's really got up as you can probably hear and um, as soon as I stop paddling we start heading back towards the rocks. How's kayaking Annabelle? Are you a natural? After my last video declaring how I was going to uh, plan what I was going to say and uh, have some structure to the next video and make sure everything goes to plan, um, the great British weather struck and unfortunately I couldn't say half the things I wanted to say while I was bobbing about on the sea having a lovely time. Uh, that wind was really strong and uh, the, I don't know if the, um, the tide was coming in because we just kept getting pushed back against the rocks and um, subsequently I'm now soaked, uh, but the kids have had a great time. And the beauty with that kayak is it's so quick to put up, so quick to put away. Actually, the fact we're only out there for half an hour really doesn't matter. Well, the problem with coming out uh, and not planning anything for dinner and then being out a lot longer than you intended to is um, you have to stop at a pub on the way home and get some dinner.
beef burger with coleslaw, salad, chips and an egg on top. I'm going to get one of them one day. Well that was a very, very nice meal and a nice pub. The kids had plenty of places to play so it was good fun. Uh, but I have had a couple of ciders, so I'm sat over this side of the car. <laughs> Sarah hates it when I sit here after I've had a drink. So don't criticise at all, do I? Ever. Scarecrow! Scarecrow! Well, there we go, the end of another ridiculously long day during the summer holidays. So my theory about Hyundai and how I think they are going to be the uh, saviours of the EV, I, I think they're the people that are going to bring the masses to um, electric vehicles. And here's my reasoning why. So if you look at the market at the moment, uh, there's a really, really big drive at the moment towards uh, SUVs, uh, crossovers, SUV compacts, whatever you want to call them. These kind of small, what look like four-wheel drive, kind of sports utility vehicle type things. And the likes of Hyundai and uh, Kia, they've really nailed the market. What they're doing is they're producing really kind of um, affordable, decent quality vehicles that uh, people want to buy and are happy to drive around. Basically what they're doing is they're identifying an area that has got market growth in it that people that they can see that people are going to want to buy into. Now, if we step out of that and into where they're looking to go with the future, for the last year or so, they've been talking, this is Hyundai, really heavily about hydrogen fuel cells. And this is where they see it going. Well, they've obviously identified that that probably isn't where it's going to end up for the likes of you and I that drive vehicles around the town um, for everyday use. So they've adapted that and ultimately they've readjusted their position and said, well, maybe hydrogen isn't going to be the, the way forward. Let's look more at hybrids and EVs. So they've increased their forecast on how many EVs they're going to build. So when you take that and then take the fact that they know what the market wants, put those two things together, they are probably going to produce a vehicle that will hit the nail on the head as far as what the consumers want. Now, that vehicle is probably, short term, going to be the Kona. They're talking about that EV being 240 plus miles. Well, depends what testing that's done on. But even if they can hit that 200 mile mark, all of a sudden you've got all those people that before have been put off by EVs because they don't go far enough, faced with the proposition of a car that's desirable, a car that's selling well, and it does the mileage that they want it to do. And not only that, it's mega cheap to run. So what more do you want? Now, they've got the Ionic at the moment. That has been really successful, but it's also been really unsuccessful. And the reason it's been unsuccessful is because they haven't been able to produce enough batteries, so they tell us, in order to meet the demand. So you, know, you have a waiting list of months and months and months even to get one, if you're lucky enough that you can test drive one, because it doesn't seem like all the garages have got the vehicles available to test drive. So that car, I've, I've looked inside one, I've not driven one, but I've seen inside one. It's a lovely car and the people that have them rave about them uh, and they, they seem to, again, tick all the boxes. It, um, it's a really desirable car. So if they can also get the supply right for the batteries of that, then you're, they're going to have effectively a, um, a saloon car, or I think it's a hatchback, uh, so a family car, and this SUV, two very desirable vehicles, which do the mileage, look nice, people will want to buy them. And if people want to buy them, the market share will go up. And I think, you know, whilst we, the Tesla, new, the new Nissan Leaf, uh, the current Renault Zoe, and the, the kind of the future enhancements that are gonna come for that, um, you know, the list goes on, the BMW i3, etc., etc. Whilst they're all brilliant cars, actually these two cars I think are going to be very affordable, very desirable and I think they're going to catapult us forward. Uh, we've all waited for the Tesla Model 3, the price bracket on that is probably going to be more than we think. The price bracket on these Hyundai's I think is just going to fit really really well and um, for me I think these are the two cars that are going to move us forward 
and take us to the next level with EVs. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's vlog. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, remember to like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you again very soon. Take care.